Hey there, it's Miss Gilligan back again. I'm so excited to join you again and continue reading and discussing our story, The Clean Team. Give me one minute to share my screen with you. All right, here we go. So there's our story, The Clean Team. This is one in a series of Funny Bone Readers written by Anna Prokos. Let's revisit our learning target. Our job as readers as we've been reading The Clean Team is to describe character setting and plot events. So that's our I can statement. I can describe characters, setting, and plot events. Remember that The Clean Team is a realistic fiction story. That means that even though it is a story that was made up by our author, what happens in the story could happen in real life. And the author's purpose for writing realistic fiction is to entertain us. So we learn while we read, but we also enjoy a story that entertains us and maybe even makes us laugh sometimes. We always start by warming up our brain and doing a quick review. So yesterday we introduced the elements of fiction. Let's review them today. We know that the characters are people or animals who are important to the story. In the clean team, the characters in our story are, or should I say the main characters in our story are, you got it, Meet Nick and Sloppy Joe. The setting is where and when the story takes place. The setting can be at a particular location, indoors or outdoors. It could be at a particular time of day or even a time of the year, a particular season. Let's identify the setting from our story, The Clean Team. Yesterday, we read this story, and we're going to reread it today, but I want you to think for a minute and answer these two questions. Where did the story take place, and when did the story take place? As a reader, if you're not sure of the answer, remember that you can always look back through the story if you need some help. So if we looked back through the story, quickly just to answer the question of what is the setting what's really going to help us is to look at our illustration so let me get back to the beginning for a minute so let's just quickly tab through the story to think about the setting when we look at the illustrations we can see that neat nick and some other people that we just see glimpse glimpses of in the background appear to be outside on a sidewalk. As we continue to go through, we get a bigger picture of the where. It looks like they're in a town. I see some different, what looks like businesses, sidewalks or road. This might be a park. And I can see from the blue sky that it is outside. You might also tell me that based on the illustrations, what the characters are wearing, that it's probably spring or summer because they are not wearing coats or hats or gloves. Of course, we can also look at the words in the story because the first sentence here says, Neat Nick is walking through the town. So if we are to answer our question, what is the setting of our story? Where did the story take place? We would say in a town, near a park, on the sidewalk, or the streets of a town. And when did the story play take place? We could say during the day, in the spring, or the summer. So our setting is important. And remember, if you're not sure, you can always look back in the story to answer some questions. Then we talked about another important element of fiction, which is 
the important events. These are the things that happened in the story during the beginning, the middle, and the end. The important things that happen that help us to understand the flow of the story. Usually in the beginning and middle and end of a story, we have a conflict, which is a problem. And by the end of the story, we have a resolution or how that problem was solved. So now we're going to reread our story. Remember, good readers always reread. As we reread, let's think about the important events in the beginning, middle, and end of the story. But before we reread, let's review our vocabulary words. We had two important vocabulary words, despair with no hope. And I added this illustration today to our definition. You can see that Neat Nick has a look on his face like he is just full of despair. And I remember that's when he was seeing that there was so much trash on the ground. And then mucky means covered in dirt or filth. And I added this illustration from the story because it shows us that sloppy Joe is mucky. He's covered with dirt and stains on his face and on his clothes, but it also shows how the earth or the, the land, the sidewalk is also very mucky, covered in dirt or filth, which happened to be garbage. So now we're gonna reread. Remember, focus on how you might describe the important events in the story. So as you listen to the story, ask yourself, what is the important event that's happening in the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story? Here we go. Listen as I read. The Clean Team by Anna Prokos. Neat Nick is walking through the town. He spots some garbage thrown around. He throws the trash in the garbage bins. I love cleaning up, Neat Nick grins. Nick picks up litter from here and there. The street is so dirty, he says in despair. Who is tossing this trash on the ground? Neat Nick spots someone walking around. He's mucky and messy from head to toe. Hi, the kid says. My name's Sloppy Joe. Neat Nick here, says Nick, and I'll take a guess. You must be the one who is making a mess. A mess, Joe asked, I don't understand. Look, Nick points, that drink fell from your hand. Sloppy Joe shrugs, what's the big deal? And then he tosses a banana peel. Neat Nick falls down with a slippery slip. Whoa, he screams, your trash made me trip. I'm sorry, says Joe, but I must admit, it's fun watching you do a banana split. It's not fun, Nick says, when you dirty the street. You have to try hard to keep the earth neat. Can you help me, Joe asks, to stop being mucky? I don't want the earth to look and smell yucky. So Neat Nick and Sloppy Joe work hand in hand. In no time, the two friends had cleaned up the land. It's fun being neat, Joe says with a wink. Now let's get ice cream. What do you think? And here again at the back, we had our big question. What did Sloppy Joe learn about being neat? I want you to still keep thinking about that. What is the lesson that Sloppy Joe learned? And what is the lesson that we can learn? And there's a quick look at our big words once again despair and mucky, and then garbage. So let me get back to our lesson. So while you listened, you were to focus on how you might describe the important events in the story. So let's start at the beginning. Let's describe the important events in the beginning of the story. To help us do that, we want to ask who, where, when, and what happened. So in the beginning of the story, who 
was the main character. Well, that's Neat Nick. Where did our story take place? Outside on the street and when during the day. So that's our setting. So in the beginning, our main character, Neat Nick, is outside during the day on the streets in town. And what's the important events that happened? Well, Neat, Nick's, Neat Nick walks through town picking up trash off the street. He wonders who is making a mess by throwing the trash on the ground. Now let's describe the important events in the middle of the story. This is where I want you to think on your own following what I just modeled. So when you think about the important events in the middle of the story, think about who is in the middle of the story, what characters, where is the middle of the story taking place, where and when, what's the setting in the middle of the story, and what's the important event that happened or important events. And I've added an illustration here to help you think about some of the important things that happened. So I'm going to stop and wait for you to think about describing the important events in the middle of the story. Remember, you can think out loud or you can turn and talk to someone who is there with you. Okay, let's take a look at what I was thinking. So the way I describe the important events in the middle of the story is I thought, okay, who are my characters in the middle? It's still neat Nick, but now we meet our character Sloppy Joe. The setting, the where and when stayed the same. The two characters are still outside on the streets of town during the day. But when I think about describing the important events, here's what I thought of. What happened in the middle of the story? Neat Nick sees Sloppy Joe and realizes that he is the one making a mess on the ground. Nick gets upset after he slips on a banana peel Joe has dropped on the ground. So maybe you and I were thinking the same things. We're doing a good job thinking about the important events and describing them. Let's keep going. Now we want to think about the end of the story. How would we describe the important events that happened at the end? Again, we're going to think about who are the characters? Did we meet anyone new or is it the same characters that we met in the beginning and middle? Has the setting changed where and when the story takes place or did it stay the same? And then most important, what happened at the end? In the middle of the story, we could say the conflict is that someone has been littering, putting trash on the ground, making the ground or the earth mucky and messy. Or we could say the conflict is that Neat Nick is upset with Sloppy Joe for dropping his trash on the ground. So maybe now at the end of the story, when we think about the important events, we want to include how that conflict has been resolved or what the solution was to the problem or the conflict in our story. So this is going to be your reading response. Remember, before you describe the important events at the end of the story, you should reread the story on your own. And then you can jot down on a piece of paper who where, when, and what happened. Or if someone is there with you, you can read the story together and you can have a discussion. You can talk about who, where, when, and what happened. And you can describe the important events at the end of the story. That's up to you, either way you'd like to do it. Now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a minute and come back to talk to you.
All right. So once again, let's review what it is we've been working on in our reading lesson. We've been reading fiction text, specifically realistic fiction. And we know that realistic fiction is written by an author to entertain us. But I hope you're noticing that even though we're being entertained, we're reading a fun story with events that could really happen in real life. We're also doing some learning because as a reader, we're thinking about what the text says. We're combining that with what we already know, and we're using that to describe our characters. We're identifying our setting, and then we're also describing the important events that are taking place in the story from the beginning to the middle to the end. We're also thinking about important vocabulary words that help us to better understand our characters, how they're feeling, helping us to better understand the conflict or the problem in the story, and helping us to better understand the important events. So your reading response tonight is to reread the story. You can do that alone. You can do it with a buddy or a partner. You can take turns reading page to page. When you reread the story, I then want you to think about the important events at the end of the story. I want you to ask who, where, when, and what happened, and I want you to discuss that or jot it down. If you have any problems working on your reading response, you can reach out to your classroom teacher and ask for some help. So I hope you enjoyed our lesson today. Remember that all of us here love you and miss you, and I can't wait to see you again. We're gonna have one more lesson together with the clean team, Neat Nick and Sloppy Joe. So in the meantime, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.